Today we're visiting a Route 66 attraction that's been around for 50,000 years and really makes an impact, the Meteor Crater. Hey everyone, welcome to Sidetrack Adventures, this is Steve. Right now I'm right off Route 66 in Arizona at a place that has long been a popular Route 66 attraction, the Behringer Meteor Crater. So over the last few years, they've really done a great job of building up and improving the visitor center here. So it's probably a good thing that when the meteor hit, it just missed it. But no, all joking aside, this is a really interesting place and a really fun place to stop off Route 66. So let's head on inside and check out the visitor center and check out the meteor crater. We are about 37 miles east of Flagstaff, right off Interstate 40 and what was once Route 66. Sometimes a place has a name that makes you wonder why it's called that. This isn't one of those places. This also isn't the oldest, newest, or biggest impact crater on Earth, but it is the best preserved, and it's always amazing to see just how big it is when you get to it. I think the crater has an interesting history. So a meteorite struck here about 50,000 years ago, and this is before humans arrived in the Americas, but Native Americans had been aware of the crater for at least a thousand years, as artifacts had been found near the rim. But the first non-natives to see the crater is somewhat of a mystery. I'm heading up the stairs to the museum now, and from outside the crater, it isn't really apparent there's anything special here other than a hill. So it's not surprising the Spanish and early pioneers missed this. I mean, we are right next to the crater, and only now can we kind of start to see this might be more than just a hill. I'll get back to the discovery and why the official history might be wrong in just a minute, but we are now in the courtyard outside the museum, and there is an actual test capsule from the Apollo program here. I believe this was used for ocean testing. NASA did use Meteor Crater to help train the Apollo astronauts in geology before going to the moon. Let's head into the museum. Meteor Crater is a national, natural landmark. Here's a display related to the Apollo program. This is the largest piece of the meteorite that has been found to date and weighs over a thousand pounds. It's made up of mostly iron. The full meteorite was about 150 feet across. And here is the museum. When I came here as a kid, the museum was pretty sparse, but it has been greatly improved over the years. There's a lot of information in here, and they do a great job of presenting it. With all the talk about impacts, it can get a little scary though. We came here when my son was about 5 years old, and he was pretty worried about the earth getting hit after going through the museum. I tried to explain how Bruce Willis would save us, but he didn't get the reference. The shock of impact melted most of the meteor and spread it with the large plume of debris. It took just 10 seconds and Meteor Crater was formed. This exhibit shows some upcoming close encounters with asteroids and it looks like one is going to be really close in a few years. But as cool as this museum is, of course, the main attraction here is the crater itself. I'm not sure the camera does the size of this place justice. Let's head down to one of the observation decks and get back to the history of this place. So the official history here is that an army scout that was part of Wheeler's expedition discovered it in 1871, and the expedition named it Franklin's Hole after the scout. Now it's always possible that happened, but there's no mention of Franklin's Hole in any of the expedition's journals, nor is it ever listed on any maps. The person who claimed to be the scout is the only source of this story and he didn't tell his story until almost 50 years later. 
and his story had differences in every telling. Early ranchers called this Coon Butte for whatever reason, but it isn't known who first realized there was a crater here. The floorboards here are a little squeaky, but let's take a look down into the center of the crater. I zoomed in on an astronaut mannequin they have at the bottom. They don't normally allow people down to the bottom anymore to help preserve the crater, but the mannequin helps give you a sense of the crater's size. The first scientist didn't get out here until 1891, but once scientists started coming out here, there was an argument about what caused this crater, with some thinking it was a meteorite impact, and others insisting it was volcanic in origin, or was caused by steam. In 1903, Daniel Berenger purchased the land here for about $250,000. He believed this to be an impact crater and thought the meteorite was still underground here and planned to find it. Most of the meteorite was vaporized on entry and impact, so Berenger never did find what he was looking for, despite over two dozen shafts being dug into the crater floor over the next 26 years. When Berenger purchased the crater, most people believed it to be volcanic in origin, but by the time he died in 1929, the consensus was that it was an impact crater. Berenger was also the first to charge admission to view the crater, beginning its long history as a roadside attraction. The crater was conclusively proved to be from an impact by Eugene Shoemaker in the 1960s. The crater is over 4,000 feet across and 570 feet deep. It's truly incredible to look at and imagine the force of nature that created it. In the 1960s, there was an airplane crash in the crater. Fortunately, the crew lived, but the cost of getting the plane out of the crater was too high, so they just tossed the wrecked plane down one of the mine shafts. From this overlook, if we turn around the other direction, you could see how flat the land in this area is. This was really the perfect place for a meteorite to hit and have its impact crater be preserved in this grade of condition. So that's our look at the Meteor Crater. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and we'll see you next week.